X's and O's with Leroy Butler is brought to you by Pottawatomie Hotel and Casino. Hello everyone, welcome to X's and O's with Leroy Butler and we are going to go right to a pair of plays in the Dallas game. First yeah. offense and we are going to look at an Aaron Jones run and what uh, wide receiver motion, the fake jet action yeah. um, and that's, a, that's your fast guy, this. so it makes a legitimate. Had you run it with somebody else, uh, it's a decoy, right? Kinda. Right. But this is real. They could have geezed given it to him. So basically, what you have is really just two wide receivers, two tight ends, yep. and a running back. So yep. this is a running formation. Yeah, we used to call it ace formation. And I, when we play, it was ace. I mean, you got two tight ends. Right. And Jimmy Graham was split out just a little bit, and we'll, I'll explain that later. But the whole concept of it, because Dallas is almost like in a 4-3 stack defense. Right. right. But you got to pick your poison on this. We used to call that a defense, pick your poison. Who you want to block, who you want to let go, and who do you want to influence. And you do a great job of showing that with the arrows on the photos. Okay, so let's start out. So what happens is you, you have uh, Valdez Scantling going in motion as the snap right. is made to Rodgers. And so what does that do for all these guys along here? Once that a guy moves, the linebackers have to adjust now. Either they want to stay in a zone, do they want to go in man or something, but they all would take a step to go to the strength. Because when it's even, defenses say the strength is to our left. Mm -hmm. I mean, our defense are right, the offense defense are left. And it depends on who the primary receiver is. They could have said, since Kumaro is in, we'll set the strength to Scantling. Mm -hmm. Because Aaron Jones is not offset. He's right behind, right. Him, right so behind then, the quarterback. Yeah, really it's so even. It's, yeah, it's all even. So I'd say if it was me, we'll set the strength to Scantling. But on this play, they set the strength to the wide side of the field, which is fine, mm -hmm. but it works out for Green Bay in the end. Once this guy go in motion and Aaron said, wow, well, 24 stayed home. He didn't run with him, so it's not man-to-man. -man. But once he come over here, and I want to show the pictures, because uh, that's when you see the guys trying to they slide over. Sean Lee slides over. The Van Der Esch kid, they all slide over to get a better angle. And yeah, I think that's and, what hurt them. And in what's the interesting is, so as this – snap goes and he's in motion everybody starts blocking this way so it, it's they have to decide is this a end around going yep. this way it just sweep? or is it, a is it Aaron Jones going right. this way the, all yes. the blocking is going this way yeah everybody got to be synchronized right okay so let's go to the first photo and it'll yep. give you a better idea of what we're looking at here so there you see 83 uh, making his move uh, towards the left, towards the uh, open side of the field. And you can see each of those guys has an assignment. Yep. Those top three guys where you see the um, eyeing, um, they have to honor those three players. Absolutely. Because Rodgers can either hand off to Jones or he could bootleg this. And do a play action and try to throw it deep. And those guys have to stay on there. Or right. he hands it off to Valdez Scantling and they have to stay on that too. Right. And notice when the ball snapped, there's no more time left on the play clock. Yeah, that was interesting. I so, didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah, you gotta make sure you have enough just in case if you want to audible or switch the plays. But this reason why it's 0-0, zero, zero, the Packers were trying to eat up the clock. Yeah. So Aaron did a great job of letting that clock run down. That's right. This was with 6.13 left in the game. Yes. They need to run some clock off. It's 34-24. Right. As you can see, it's second and seven. Yeah. Had you had he snapped it with 10 seconds left, you say, oh, okay, we're minus 10 there. Yeah. Well, you can do it perfectly at double zero. That's very nice. Okay, let's go to the board. And that's where it really gets interesting. <laughs> like these influence, sometimes you can influence a guy, it almost helps you block them. So when Scanley comes over, and so say he's gone now, he's gone. Yep. So now you got Jimmy Graham backside with a corner, and you got Sean Lee, who's really reacting to Aaron Jones. Right. So now, once Batiara says, you know what, I'm not going to even block Robert Quinn, I think he will be influenced. By Scantling thinking it's a jet sweep, because if it's a jet sweep, 
He got to honor it. That's his man. Yeah, yep. you got to honor or it. You can't let him get off flank. Or if it's a bull. Or if it's a bootleg. comes out this way, he's right. got to handle And it. all the linebackers, these two, they take it like one little step. And that's all you need. Right. Once that happens, now you'll create the lane that you want. And now you put this guy, Robert Quinn, you put him on an island and say, what do I do? And by oh, the man. time he figures it out, you should be past him. That's what you're hoping. Right. Okay. So now we'll, you'll get an idea of how that worked. Yeah. With see the that video now. Now you see Aaron Jones has his. That's his path is right. to follow right on the heels of the offensive lineman. That's his target. Right. Is to run behind the heels of those guys. You see Jimmy Graham coming out to block the corner. Um, you see Bakhtiari is about to pick up the lineman, and then you see um, right in the middle of the screen Robert Quinn. Yeah, he's looking at Rogers handing off, right? Because yep. he's got to make sure that Rogers handed the ball off. And most quarterbacks get real sloppy in their ball handling. You can see the way Aaron Rodgers, he is fully. That's why I said earlier, this is the best ball handling I've ever seen, because he doesn't really know if Aaron has it or not. So you have to do these fakes every single time yeah. to stay consistent, because you can see like Scanley is behind the line. He can fake it and throw it out to him as a screen. Right. He can fake it and throw it deep to Kumaro, or he can have Jimmy Graham a nice uh, matchup with a cornerback. But look, also one more thing, Tom. Look at the angle of the offensive line. They got great angle blocks yeah, they do. on these guys, and that's a pretty good defensive line there. And it gets you a better angle to come up to get to the next level to get the block on the linebacker, and that's all you need for Aaron Jones. Right. Now, let's lo look at what happens. At that angle, Quinn looks like he has a chance, but because yeah. he's got to just favor Rodgers a little bit, Aaron Jones is like, Whoosh. Yep, he's out of the gate. And again, run the time. Now you get this first down, you're, in, you're inside of six minutes, going out in five minutes, you're eating that clock up. And yep. that's the thing that you have to do when you have a you know a ten point lead going into the fourth quarter, again look at all the blocks to where everybody's blocking and trying to get to the next level. Yeah, it was just great angles by these guys and Aaron Jones again. It was a great run. Now it gets you to one on one. You say Aaron Jones, we'll get you in the secondary. You'll be one on with a safety right. or linebacker. If they miss, you go into the house. Exactly. And and Quinn just cannot redirect. No. Nope. That's enough. a pretty nice line that you drew there. <laughs> if, yeah. um, you know, if that's a slower back, maybe he makes it. But Aaron Jones, once he gets his foot down, that's yep. what they talk about, that put, you know, put your foot down yes. and go. Quick and as a hiccup. That's what he's doing. And next thing you know, first down. Oh, I like that. And I think, and back to the board for a second. Here's the lane you create. Now, again, right. you, got a, you got your backup center in there. Yeah. You know, you got, you, I mean, you don't have Corey Lindsley, and you got a rookie over here. Mm -hmm. And you got your free agent in here, Billy Turner. And you, you got a guy, you didn't know if he was going to play. Right? You still had your all pro, but still these five guys on this play move their line to the next level. That gives Jones a chance to run, and now he's one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. Yeah. Or a safety. I mean, these are the kind of plays that Matt LaFleur brought to this offense. And I'll also tell you that I thought that they ran more inside zone. Yes. In other words, you know, they stayed inside yeah. the receiver. Yeah, you're right. They didn't throw a lot of toss plays like they right, were doing earlier. Right, because that's the strength of their offensive line. That's yep. what those guys do yep. really well. And that's what Aaron Jones does really well. Now, Absolutely. he can get outside. Oh, yeah. You know, they can run the wide zone, but they weren't having any success with the wide zone. Right. They decided to play smash mouth football, yep. and, and it worked. Yep. Okay, next we're going to switch over to the defense. This will be fine. <laughs> take a look at a blitz. All right, so let's take a look at a Mike Patton blitz that was really impressive. Yeah, it was. And um, we have two guys in purple, Blake Martinez and Adrian Amos. We could probably put Zadarius Smith in. Probably good. Just because he's sort of the yes. center of this whole I'll thing. I'll just circle him. Yeah, he circle was... him because he's so important in all yes. of this. And Very but, unselfish. So this is a third and five at the 44. There's only play. 50 seconds left in the half, yep. and Dallas is desperate to get on the board. Yes. And so what does Petten do? He, he dials up the split. So it all starts with Amari Cooper going in motion. Uh, Jerry Alexander goes, goes with him, with which it. shows yep. that it's uh, 
man coverage. So, yep. Zeke, yep. so, uh, so once he's on this side, oh, well, Dex, it was man coverage. Yeah, but one of these guys I, is going to be I just be don't open. get it. Once he goes with them, the ball should have went to 19. Yeah. I, I don't get that. Sometimes you kind of overthink it. Whatever the play is, if you got a good matchup, your number one receiver just showed you that it's man-to-man. It doesn't matter. And now the front should tell you it's some kind of pressure. They only got one defensive lineman in the right, game. Right, right. I mean, that, that Prescott just blew it on this particular play. But the good thing about Pettit, he shows you the illusion of a nickel defense, but it's something like they used to call NASCAR back in the day. Mm-hmm. You only need one lineman, and then you need a, a influencer again, a guy to be very unselfish, to give himself up so his teammate can get all the accolades. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, part of the reason that the, the reason we have him um, circled is that he's going to draw attention by <laughs> yeah. trying to shoot this gap. Yep. And he's going to draw this attention here. So right. let's let's just give people an idea from the photo standpoint of where we're right. at here. Okay. So there you see that's the start of it. Okay. And then we can go to the second one. All right. So we've highlighted Blake Martinez, Adrian Amos, and Ezekiel Elliott. And you can just see um, up at the kind of not quite the top, but you know, in the right guard position is is Zadarius Smith just yes. bam off the ball trying right. to make penetration between the guard and center. Yes, and exactly that makes like a big we difference. showed back here. It makes so a big go- difference back on the board because if he doesn't do that, this guy can come off. Right. And then if he if the if he comes off, they have enough guys to pick it up. But by him putting pressure in that gap, they got to stay there to make sure he's blocked. Now the tackle just opens up, and you and just he's, Preston Smith just just takes him. That's fine, yeah. but it creates a lane right through through their time. And all you need is another unselfish guy for this to work. Right. Bring in Blake Martinez. Okay. He's gonna loop around here, and when he loops around, now you got a, what we call a flooded zone. And now there's Amos coming in. So if you get back to the pitchers, you'll you'll see they kind of create. Now, see, that's what Zedarius Smith is. Those guys, they cannot leave him because he is pressuring that particular gap. And now you'll see Blake Martinez and you'll see Amos both coming through that same hole. Right. So now Zeke has to make a choice. Now, the choice is Martinez with the shortest path or the fast guy who's Amos to your right. And they're shown, they're always taught to block inside out. Right. Now, another thing I have to point out that yes, always hurts people, out. that Martinez must stay where he's supposed to be. If his head is on the other side where you drew the arrow, this play does not work and they get the ball off. Right. He has to keep his head there, so that was a great job by Martinez staying on Elliott's uh, left side. And if you could go back one spot, Bill. Um, so important thing to notice. So there's Ezekiel Elliott trying to decide which one to take. Right. Always take the inside guy, right? Yes, yes. That's the shortest path. And if that's he, exactly what he did. Yes, he, he did his job. Guy. Now, also to sh- a point you made that I didn't see – is I have the um, eye vision of Dak Prescott over there towards Randall Cobb in single and on the end Michael Gallup in single. But you pointed out, look at Amari Cooper running that drag route all the way over on the left with Jair Alexander 20 yards down the field. He's wide open. I don't know what he was doing. Yeah. But all he's got to do is flip it to him, and that's that's a big game. It's right a there, huge right? game. I mean, because you, once you feel the pressure, see, he's already locked in. You got to go through your progression, and that ball should be going to Mark Cooper because Jair doesn't really necessarily follow him. He points to like he thought maybe one of his other teammates. Because sometimes you'll go in there, you could pop out and give anybody help yeah. underneath, but it's, that didn't happen in this particular play. Could be it's. It is man-to-man. It is possible he thought Josh Jackson was going to uh, leave um, the tight end off to Savage. Yeah, but the tight end would have been wide. Yeah, right, right. So that doesn't make sense. Yeah, so it's just a play that great job by the coach. If it wasn't with the coach drawing it up, that would have been a big play. But back to the board, 
again, stay where you're supposed to be. Amos come through, gets a hit, you get an erratic throw, and you're off. Again, 50 seconds. They were trying to get back into it to maybe get a field goal or something. This mm -hmm. is a big play in the game, very impactful. But these are kind of blitzes that I love. Yeah, it's it is. Level. It's fun yeah. to watch. Last thing, let's look at the last photo. Yeah. Um, so when I first watched this, I'm like, oh, man, Adrian almost hit him in the knees, and that's a penalty. But if you look, he – Adrian Amos did everything you're supposed to do when you hit a quarterback, yes. which is one, you know, he, he didn't go low at his knees. He's actually wrapping him up at the waist. Yep. And then he flips him and lands on his side, which is exactly what they're asking you to do now. Yes. I mean, he's a smart, <laughs> smart player. Yes. He could have easily gotten a roughing the passer right. penalty on this, but he did it everything right to the point where he didn't to the drive him of the law. onto yep. his back. He's got yep. him around the waist. Yeah, um, didn't hit him in the head. The Nothing. It was perfect. Yeah, so a lot of credit goes to him. Absolutely. He affected that throw. To yes, throw no question. Flying out of bounds. So these are the kind of things they're going to do again against Detroit. And they'll work if everybody's unselfish. Right. 55, 50, 97, 52, 91. This, is not, this play is not for me. It's for... 50 or 31, whoever they choose to block, and I'm okay with that. That's why this defense That's love each other. That's a great point. It's, it's yep. all about teamwork here, about sacrificing. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. I right. want to thank Potawatomi Hotel and Casino again for supporting and sponsoring us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and we will see you next week after the Detroit Monday night game. Remember, it's on Monday night. Yes, That's go Sunday. Pack. See you next time.